All I want to be in this war isn't a general or you are not a colonel, not even a general. I'm a fighter pilot. I want to go to combat. In such a manner, I got the best job in the war. When the Japanese hit Pearl Harbor, I was flying a big desk. And you can't do much fighting from a desk, and I'm a fighter pilot. So I lied my way into the cockpit of a B-17 flying fortress with nine other crewmen. And I got to Karachi by devious methods. It was 55 hours before I got to Karachi. And then we lost that airplane, and I found myself flying the hump. General Scott's story begins here, flying the hump. 500 miles of the worst flying country in the world, over the Himalayas into the heart of China. Five hours of sweating it out, looking for Japanese planes and taking your chances with the weather. Destination, China. But no longer Chinese. For seven years, it's been part of the Japanese empire. Into this primitive country, Americans came to fight with the most modern of weapons, airborne. This is where the Flying Tigers have forged one of the most amazing links in American air power prepared to keep the aerial supply line open over the hump. Here are some of the men who did that job. They are the original flying tigers of the American volunteer group, former pilots who came to China as civilians to destroy Japanese airplanes. Their commander who led the flying tigers was Brigadier General Claire Chennault. I met General Chenault at Loy Wing, Burma. I talked him out of a P-40 because sitting on the runway was one lone P-40 and I knew that God had left it there for me. Uh, I swerved off the PSP, Pier Steel Plank Runway. I took off, climbed into the sky, going to get my first Japanese plane. Never did find the Japanese, never did find the Flying Tigers. In fact, it was a good thing because when I reached for the mounts to see where I was, there, wasn't, there were no mounts. Then I reached for the charging handles of the, of the 650 caliber guns. There was no ammunition. So if I had met the enemy, I'd be dead. General Scott didn't see the enemy that day, but he had made quite an impression. Soon after, General Chenault had delivered to him his very own P-40. But the old man, as they used to call him, had a strong warning. You better use it. He isn't giving you this for transportation. That means combat. So I used it five times a day along the Burma Road, along the Solween River. I would catch Japanese columns of men and tanks and trucks, and I would strafe them, which is a, a very dangerous job. But when you're really charged up, you can do anything. Charged up, he was. And soon enough, Scott was flying guest missions with the Flying Tigers, something he had always dreamed of. You ought to be a guest of the Flying Tigers. You're going to get shot at. Right. General Chenault's tactic was to, Scotty, concentrate on one chip. It's just like you told me your grandfather did yeah. and he taught you how to shoot quail when you were about six years old. You, when the cubby gets up, don't aim at the cubby. Aim, pick out one target and keep that gun moving even after you pass through the target because that's called the curve of pursuit. You've got to be out in front of him. You've got to shoot where that quail's gonna be. And so they did. With Chenault's tactics at hand, they filled the skies with battered P-40s, museum pieces on any other front. Simply put, it was the flying tigers who owned the sky. With 22 victories under his belt, 
General Scott had found his calling. He describes it as the best job in the war. On July the 4th, 1942, I was anointed with the finest job in the war, the best one I could have done. I became the, uh, the group commander of the 23rd Fighter Group. We were activated and went into combat the same day. And I had on my wing men like Tex Hill, who had 16 victories, Ed Rector, who had 14 on the left wing. I don't deserve much credit for the ones I shot down because I had all those people back of me. That's how easy I got the best job in the war. These are the men who own the skies over China, General Scott's wingmen. When it was all said and done, these flying tigers had compiled an incredible record, killing 14 enemy aircraft for every one they lost. It makes me feel mighty proud because I come home to my homeland where my roots are and I find this museum which is trying to teach young people that the best way to ensure that they never have to fight another war is to keep such reminders in front of the public all the time, like this Museum of Aviation. If we do this, the probability is that they may never have to go to war. But if things like this are not done, and this generation forgets all about them and never learns about them, the probability is we are or they are going to have to fight again. They'll remember that I was the biggest time hog in the world. They'll remember me probably as the guy who just plain liked to fly. 